Hi folks, thank you so much for joining us. We have Janelle Pallister here from Australia. She's an absolutely amazing person. We're, we're uh, very, very uh, happy to have you with us here, Janelle. Thank you for joining us. You are the co-coach for High Performance Hub on the Gold Coast with Michael Bull. That's right, yep. In yeah, so I've been in this position since January now. Got it. And in addition, um, you, you were in the Seoul Olympics as 1988 um, in, in the 400 and the 800 freestyles. So you've had a fabulous right, career in swimming, obviously, right? Everybody wants to, to have that type of career as they go yeah. through. And in addition, right, you're, you're um, here coaching at the high performance level in Australia. So tell us a little bit about what originally got you involved in swimming? Um, so I, I suppose I'll, I'll go back to my swimming days. Um, my, I was an asthmatic and I was advised by the doctor back in those days, which is a while ago, um, to take me down to the pool and, and just put me in the water. So it, it helped regulate with the breathing. Um, so I went through the learn to swim plus the, the, the medical reason. And initially I didn't like it. I, I you know, I was thrown in. Basically, I was thrown in the deep end and, you know, and, and seeing what I could do and what I couldn't do. And then I had a, a fabulous learn to swim teacher and um, taught me bribery from a very young age. You know, if you do this, I'll paint nails. <laughs> if you do this, I'll do that. Um, and, and that was Mari. And she took me right through. And then I had uh, I had some great coaches along the way to to help me achieve my dreams. You know, I had a dream when I was 10 years old of, of, to become an Olympian. And yeah, and so that was around the 1980 Olympic Games when they were in Moscow. And, um, and at the age of 16, I thought that that dream was going to be just a dream. I didn't think it was going to be achievable. But then, I, you know, in 1988, it, it became a reality. So I, may, I became an Olympian. I became a, a, a dual finalist and uh, placed fifth and sixth in the world. So that's that, amazing. That, yeah, what a wonderful yeah. story. That's a fantastic. <laughs> and so, um, so that, that's obviously some of the, the wonderful highlights. I'm sure you had a lot more along the way. Um, what, now, you're also very uniquely, and, and this is an interesting thing, in a, a, a fairly women-dominated sport, female-dominated sport, we don't have, and you, you'd come and, and, and said this in, a, in another number of articles that I saw, that, that there are not as many women um, in, in the coaching field. Can you, can you talk to that? Yeah, sure. It's, um, you know, women are very generally seen as the, the empathetic and the caring type of um, person. So we're always sort of pigeonholed into the learn to swim and the junior ranks because it's that um, caring nature that, that keeps that encouraging going. And then once the swimmers sort of get to a certain level, it becomes a very male-dominated dominated field and, and and whether it's through um, society or or society expectations but it's very hard for the females to sort of get to that next level and get opportunities to get to that next level to take athletes on um, and you know and it's it's also breaking old uh, old way of thinking or old mentality um, and you know we spoke about all we really, well, me, I'll speak for me, all, you know, all I sort of really look for is that acceptance and being inclusive rather than being exclusive. So, you know, and, and I don't think any female wants to be get, just given a token position. I think every female wants to earn their right and earn their spot. It's just getting those opportunities. Right. And, and I think every, every person wants the respect that they build, yeah. right? And, and I think there's, to me, there, uh, and, and I think to a lot of people, there shouldn't really be a difference from that standpoint. If you're good at what you do, you should yeah. have the opportunities that you, right, that, that you've worked for. And yeah, absolutely. It's tough when somebody doesn't have those opportunities when you say, okay, here's how far you can go because of whatever. Um, tell us a little bit about your swimming journey. So you, you started very young, you got all the way up. How, how did it go? Was it just kind of smooth and up you went or <laughs> were there some challenges? No, it's like the roller coaster. You, you know, you get on at Disneyland. It's it's you you get on and you're excited and and uh, you, you you're sort of heading up. You're heading up in the right to uh, the right to trajectory, and and then all of a sudden you start to 
you know, you start the ride and you go down, you go up and you go around and, you know, and almost sometimes even backwards. And um, so, I, you know, anyone sort of expecting their, their ride or their journey to be plain sailing, you know, has really, is not living in reality. You know, if you, if you speak to many athletes, they all go through different challenges throughout their, their career. And, um, and it's, it's sort of coming out the other side of the challenge that makes them the stronger athlete. So for me, I, you know, I had a challenge. I nearly gave the sport away when I was 16. And, and, I, and I sort of took a leap at that faith. I, I had a change of coach. I went to a coach that was very, very hard. Um, I, I really literally felt like I was going to die and go to hell. He took me on to a, a, um, a, a, another way of thinking, you know, and that really became my reality with um with swimming you know and that 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 reality became the olympic games and um he was the one that really sort of yeah catapulted me from the age of 16 almost giving it away to the age of 18 and and making that olympics and being part of that olympian club it, it sounds like to me and and, and i, I don't want to put words in your mouth but it sounds like to me that it wasn't the length of your arms but more your mindset that changed, right? That that, that that was a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I I, I was um, quite stale at the age of 16. And then, you know, as I said, my coach, Dick Kane, um, he he changed that mindset. He 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 allowed me to see what was what was achievable. You know, he, he set the bar very high and he allowed me to see what was achievable. And I could have quite easily said, no, that's too hard. But, uh, you know, for me, it was the type that was like, yeah, I can do that, I, you know, and that's where I want to go. That's what I want to do. So and then, you know, I had uh, Bill Sweetenham, who's also been a, a very big influence for me as well. Another very hard coach, but also a very, um, you know, a very good uh, mind coach as well. Right. Right. Just because they're 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 you know, they, they provide you with a very challenging environment. That, that doesn't mean that they're not, you know, got a great heart and they're, they're trying to help you get there. And that's maybe the pathway. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the, I think that's the struggle for coaches in, in this era, you know, they have to be tough and then they have to be hard. They don't have to be rude. They don't have to be uh, condescending. It's, but, you know, you need to be challenged because the human body will naturally want to, to, to protect itself. But if you have someone there that, that's raising the bar and challenging you to, 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 to really shoot for that bar, then, you know, they take you beyond what, what the body may want to do, you know. So, yeah, it, it's always having that, that fine line. You've got, to be, you've got to be empathetic, you have to be caring, but you have to be challenging and, and you know, and really challenge the person to, to get to the, what they dream of doing. That, that's great. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the goals you have in, in Australian swimming, at least personal, that you'd like to see happen for, yeah. for swimming in Australia? For me, you know, coaching was never really a goal for me. It was something never really, I, I looked at and was like, yeah, I really want to be a coach. It was something that I sort of fell into because of my children. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and as, it, as I've evolved throughout the, the, the journey, you know, I think I evolved because I always made sure that I wanted to take uh, one step in front of the swimmers that I had I had to make sure that I was always one step ahead of them to be able to help them and guide them along their journey but um, now that I'm in the high performance uh, with Michael Bowl, it's it's sort of taken another another avenue to where I thought I would be I, and I you know I, I represented Australia as a coach at junior junior worlds twice and junior pan pacific um, games and um, and now I've sort of gone on to the high performance, which is more the the open teams. It's it's something that yeah yeah I'd like to be you know I'd like to be able to get a um, a swimmer on the open team and I'd like to be a coach on the open team. Um, again, just different opportunities and different uh, different um, journeys along the way. I think so. It's something yeah, but you know, and and again, not just helping the swimmer make the team, helping the swimmer through that whole journey of life. Right. We actually don't look at swimming as a sport, which is kind of funny. We look at it more of like a lifestyle. Yep. And, uh, and the reason why is, you know, your parents are going with you from, right. Your vacations are changed because of it. They're taking time off from their work to, to support you. 
and 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 the other kids in the family whether they swim or not they're going to be there right they all have to, to go along so it really ends up and we only get uh, a couple weeks off you know twice a year or something like this so it's really a lifestyle it right? is yeah it is and, and, yeah it's, 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 and, and it's a hard lifestyle you know and it's a hard lifestyle for the coach but it's also a hard lifestyle for the partner you know so for me i've been extremely lucky lucky with my husband who's been you know i sort of say that he he plays a role a, th a three role he he's my rock he's my punching bag and he's my he's my encouraging husband so um <laughs> depends on how i come home from each training session which depends on which ones he's, he's going to be right right <laughs> and and you see a lot of times what uh you know, nowadays we're, we're doing a lot of where, where we're kind of competing against things like this for our, our, our kids um, attention. Right. And and you see, like you said, it's not an easy lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and, and so when somebody picks that type of lifestyle, it's um, I have my hats off to them. And, and I think all of us seem to be like brothers and sisters all around the world. We, we've all done the same thing. We know, I know what it was like in watching that black line on your <laughs> pool deck, you know, what, that what I went through. And uh, so we just kind of know each other and it doesn't matter what age we are, gender, we just, everybody knows each other. It's nice. And it's incredible when my daughter got into swimming and I didn't push her into it because you know, it's my lifestyle. It doesn't have to be hers, um, but she just kind of wanted to join. She was surrounded by it a lot, and and she joined the summer. And I just saw the benefits immediately. And when she felt like that was her community, and it, it it's so, right, it's a great community, and it does it gives back a tremendous amount. It takes a lot, right, and then it gives yeah. back this amazing, right, yeah. camaraderie and everything else. So. If you can, this is a tough question. What does swimming mean to you? Uh, I, I, initially, swimming as a swimmer, it was about achieving and results. And now I'm past the the being the swimmer. I see it's a, it's it's so much more. It's about discipline. It's about time management. It's about dedication. It's about dealing with the ups and downs and learning how to to have that mindset of getting knocked down seven times, getting up eight, eight times. It's about um, learning that not everyone's going to win the gold medal, but everyone can be the best they can be. And, you know, and when you get past swimming, it, it's, it, you move on to the, to the working community. So a lot of these lessons that you learn through swimming, um, you take through life. So it's not just about swimming. I, and that's what I try to try to instill in, in the athletes that I coach. It's not just about swimming. Swimming is something that you do and it's something that you, you, you love and something that you want to achieve at, but it's not who you are, you know, it, but it helps you develop different characteristics. Right. It really, um, I see it uh, setting people apart in a lot of ways from like when, when, when we're looking at hiring employees and things like that. And if they've had a background in competitive swimming, you really know that they can handle whatever comes up in a lot of ways, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was on the um, physio table not so long ago and, and they said, oh, look, this is going to hurt. And I said, oh, well, if that's what I need to do, that's what I need to do. And they just laughed at me. But I think, you know, even though I've been out of swimming for 30 something years myself, um, that that um, mindset is still there, you right. know, because I it's knew that's what I needed now. to do. Absolutely. It really has, right? It, it forms you in, in yeah, so does. many ways. Um, yeah. So so just interested in this side of it, um, because you've had a lot of experience in swimming in a lot of different areas of it. Um, in your experience, if you look at the different cornerstones, right, we, we define them as the mind, right, the different aspects that really like support your ability to perform. Um, so you have the mind, technique, how you move your skeletal system, right, strength and flexibility, energy systems like the in-water training, and then the fuels like oxygen, hydration, nutrition, and sleep. You look at all those and you have synergy in the middle where it kind of pulls everything together. Yep. For you, what would you say was one of the, the factors, if you had to put your finger on one or two of them, what, what are the prime things that you think people need to focus on? You know, if you have a look at the Olympic Games final, and it doesn't matter what event, you have top 10, oh, sorry, top eight athletes, athlete, you know, whether it be running, swimming, whatever it may be, you have 
eight people of the fastest in the world all come from different coaching all, all have different philosophies all coach different ways and and things like that but the I, I think the really big thing is that the mind the mindset and the the, the psychology side of it, um, you know, I, I I do a lot of reading, you know, I, do, I watch a lot of uh, YouTube and videos, and there's a really good one about Michael Phelps, and you know, and it's it's the good can do what the good do, the great just take that extra little step, and it's it's that mindset of knowing that, okay, this is what I need to do, this is what I want to do, and this is how I'm going to get it. I've got to work out my team around me who's going to help me get there. And, and I think that's where the mindset comes in, you know, and once you've got the mindset, the, the, your team that um, could be the nutritionist can help you with the hydration and the, the, the nutrition. And then you have um, like the doctor, the team doctor that helps you with, uh, you know, whether it's your bloods or whether it's with sleep or whether it's, you know, it, it, you know the oxygenation and things like that. And then you, you have your coach and that, then you're a team. So one piece of twine isn't very strong but if you put three or four pieces of twine together and you make a rope and that's where it's it becomes strong but i think Ooh, i definitely I love that saying strong. yeah <laughs> that's great wow so um yeah so it, it's it's kind of uh pulling that together but if you have the mindset that's actually why we have our mind works program right to help athletes because what we've noticed and, and found a lot is everything comes out of your mind right everything you do how you move everything so if you get that one right you've got a great starting point right yeah. and, and then that goes to the next step with you too right once you have that mind so we we pour that mind work program we work on focus um mm -hmm. we work on uh, you know um, basically harnessing your emotion to help yeah. you versus hurt you or do nothing for you um yeah. and then we also work on progression how to increase your ability to progress and I, I think um, we just noticed that it, it, it makes all the difference to have mental training. And I think not just in swimming, I think yeah. in everything in life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, to, to get better at swimming, you have a coach that helps you progress. Like you said, you know, the progressive overload. But, you know, the mind still needs a coach. And, you know, and, and I, you know, my, my, I've worked with um, Dr. Bruce Laurie, and I know Bruce has been one of your um, uh, people that you've interviewed. And you know, amazing, amazing man. And and to to work with him and on the mind, and, and the ability of what the mind can can see and can work with and can grow with, um, I think that says it all. Right. Yeah. I, I, Bruce is phenomenal, and 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 all of our other members on that team are just top in the world and they're fantastic we're so happy to have them um so you've uh, gotten a chance to see some of our, our tools on our fast track and you had some interesting comments on them um what did you like about the fast track tools why do you think they'd help swimmers and coaches it's a a website that's all there you know and you click on the fast track and you can see the avatars you can see um the stroke mechanics you know from the four from the front from the sides from above from below um, on all strokes so you, you can sort of manipulate what you want to see and how you want to see it then you go to the um, the program planning and then you can see the race planning and race analysis um, uh, the, the, you know you can see the conversion it has a link to the, the swimming from yards to meters to to long course meters is the conversion it's just that there's so much right there you don't have to go searching for all these different tools it's it's all there for you to be able to to you know click on different links like the mind um in the nutrition's coming into it as well uh, and just all the different opportunities is all there just at the the click of a button and i you know i'm sure I, I went on to it the other day and, you know, an hour later, I was like, oh, I better go and do something else. So it was because it, I just kept on looking at all the different tools that I could use. Right, right. Yeah, I think that um, lately we've been working very heavily on the on the graphic view of the of the calculators. And I, I just love that part of it. It's just exciting. And then what we what we're trying to do is give more opportunity for people all over the world to and basically build like a world stage where we can get people like, like yourself, right? And as you mentioned, Bruce and all these different incredible people and, and people in every corner of the world be able to access it. Yeah. 
And I think if you have that, and and so um, you're able to contribute anytime you want once you're an, an FM influencer. Um, so, you know, if you have something you want to contribute to the world, and so it's just a, a place where everybody can get this great information. Um, very soon, we'll be coming out with our team learning center, which yeah. is completely, you know, free for everybody. And everybody can get in there and they, that you can build your teams and your levels and everything. For me, one of the big things is it leaves a an opportunity um, to almost have a legacy program so that at some point, if you move to another job, everybody can still follow along. The team doesn't fall. Yes, when you go yeah. to the next team, you left yeah. something that stays in place. So I think yeah. it's great that way. Yeah, I really think, you know, with the the athletes of today, as you said before, the phones and everything's very visual. And, you know, I, I tend to look at um, what would I like as an athlete? And then I, I look at what's available and I go and I and I kept on going, wow, I wish this was, was around when I was swimming. I w wish this was around when I was swimming because everything's right there, you know, and it's very visual. You can see it. And it's, it's at, like I said, it's at the click of the button. So it's immediate. Um, so I, I really think, you know, with, with the, the, the way society is, but and also the way the athletes are, they can see something straight away. And, uh, and I think it's going to be, a, a, well, it is a fantastic coaching tool for the coaches out there. Yeah. And, and uh, so we're, we're trying to build the media, right, the visual methods that people use. And then we're trying to have the, the top experts be yeah. able to transition their information through a visual we're, we're a visual interpreter of that information try to deliver it so people can understand it and use it put it right on the deck right in the water with the swimmer and i think yeah. that'll help so yeah. um the, the other thing one, one other thing to, to mention about it that i think is really worthwhile is it tries to take the burden off the coach by allowing the swimmer to control their own goals and and and, and engage them so it really engages that swimmer and they can email it right to you as a coach yeah. and everybody's coordinated here's my splits here's what i got to do this right so everybody's like working together i like that so, so that, that you know it also it creates accountability and ownership so uh, i know when i sort of speak to, to swimmers i always like post race i always say okay give me a debrief tell me what you thought mm -hmm. rather than you know coaches just going straight in and going oh you did this and did this and did this i like to get the 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 thought process of the swimmer first so that actually that 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 um opportunity with with fluid mechanics um gives that swimmer the accountability and the opportunity to take ownership right and we just want to make sure everybody had that possibility first thing that i do when i when i consult with the swimmer to, to help them is that you know i'm going to ask them if they work with me a few times what, what's your cycle count what's your cycle rate right because those are the two main metrics that you're looking at and then you know you're building from there and if they don't know it we go back over it and say okay here's a cycle count cycle rate because if you don't know that when you're in the yeah. pool right they say if you don't know it you can't build it and if you can't build it you can't use it yeah right so we go we'll go with that so yeah. great so um let me ask you uh just love to have any any messages because you've been in this your whole life it sounds like right and <laughs> yeah, no. what, what message do you have for our younger community members and maybe parents that are thinking about, you know, what they want to get their kids involved in? What kind of message do you have for these folks coming up? Um, you know, if, I'll, I'll go with the swimmers. The biggest thing is enjoy the journey. It's, it's, it's going to be an up and down journey, so, but enjoy it and, and learn when you are in the trough or you are in the low period, um, learn from it because you will come out and you will come out higher again. Um, it's, it's, it's the way of, of the journey of a swimmer or, or an athlete. Um, for parents, just to be there to support. There was something that I, you know, I read quite a while ago and it's something, and I try to instill it in the parents of the swimmers that I coach is that um, the parent, you know, the, the advice that you, you give your athlete before they go to race is good luck, darling, I love you. And when they come back from the races, what did the coach say? The, the, if the athlete wants to say or tell the parent, the parent goes, that sounds good. Well done, darling, I love you. That's it. Right. You know, you, you can't be the coach. There, there's, the parents aren't allowed into the school, you know, the school classroom and tell the teachers how to teach. Then you really shouldn't be trying to coach the athlete as well. It's, it's there to support. And like I said before, you know, a piece of twine by itself is quite weak. 
But when you bring the, so the coach, the athlete and the parent together, three pieces of twine make it strong. Right. So, yeah. you know, if you can actually work together and support, then the coach, the athlete and the parent will, will enjoy the journey. I think a lot of times as a parent, because it's very difficult for me, you know, not to, you know, and, and, and I try not to do that at all with a coach because I, you know, hopefully know better at this point to do that. But really, your child always needs a parent. Yeah. And when you play the role of the coach, they get confused as to whether you're a parent now or whether you're a coach. The coach yes. is a coach. The parent, yeah. you want to be mom. They need a mom. Yes. Right. They need yeah. a dad. And so I think when you when you kind of get on the side, you kind of push them. It's not coming from the swimmer at that point. Yeah. It's coming from yeah. you. And you don't really want that. It's no. you know, when you stand behind that block and you've stood behind that block in, yeah. in some of the most important times. And if it wasn't self-motivated, it's not going to work out if I'm right. Yeah, I have yeah, to say I, I would be yeah. totally embarrassed if yeah. I swam and somebody beat me that was not self-motivated. <laughs> <laughs> that, would yeah. be, that would be a problem for me right yeah. if so yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't think that I was as, as strong of a swimmer if they could beat me even if they're not motivated so the yeah. idea really is if you want to let that that swimmer right really allow them that that interest and that excitement to build inside them and let the coach work with that and as a parent just like you said my mom used to ask me you know when I came in from setting a record or something like this, was did you want tuna fish or was it ham honey <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's very true you know and you know I, I can explain from you know I, I've coached my daughter and my son and my son has now retired from swimming but my daughter's still swimming so we had to develop a, a system where at, at the pool she called me Janelle and then as soon as we left the pool she called me mum and as soon as I heard mum I was mum and I didn't speak about swimming unless she wanted oh, to speak so about smart it. And, you know, and but at the we pool. separated that way. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. But when she called me Janelle, it was about swimming. And we, were, we worked as a team and we were um, coach, athlete, and, and it wasn't mum, daughter. It was, you know, we had to work out that very separated relationship because she still didn't, she still needed her mum. Wow. So I, I had to be. That's a there, brilliant then, idea, Janelle. Yeah, and there were, there were times that I'd come back from swimming and I would either be frustrated or annoyed and I would come home and I'd go and take the, the coaching uniform off and I'd put other clothes on and I'd come out and be mum. So it, it, um, but it, it's extremely important for the athlete to feel comfortable knowing that their parents love them for them, not for what they're doing. That's right. Wow. This is, and thank you for the lesson on that. I think that's absolutely right. Great. I, I, I never thought of the change in the name like that. That's an excellent <laughs> thing. Wow. Yes. It's hard, but you know, but it's working. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm, I'm hoping that you'll come back and join us another time. We'll have more conversations. Absolutely. This is wonderful. Thank you again. I appreciate the time and, and the opportunity. Thanks, John. <laughs>